today I'm going to cover uh, basic PowerShell functions, give a kind of quick overview of the syntax and some examples of PowerShell functions. Now, there are two types of functions in PowerShell. One is the basic, and the other is what is common re commonly referred to as advanced PowerShell functions. And how they behave is slightly different, but today I'm just going to cover the first. Now, the syntax of a function is the using the function keyword, followed by the function name, followed by curly braces, and then whatever is in the curly braces is the statements. So I'll start out with doing a simple hello world. And that right there is the function. Now in order, in order to call the function, you just type in the name of the function and you run it. So I'm gonna select this and either click this or press F8 and that will load that into memory and then run the function. And you'll see that it output hello world. Now, as useful as you know, just calling a function can be, a lot of times you wanna provide some sort of input. Also it's referred to as arguments. Now, without really doing anything at all, you know, to the function, I can just access the args variable. Now, the args variable is, I guess, what's referred to as a automatic variable. I might be incorrect on that, but uh, it's a variable that's provided automatically, and it supplies all the arguments that you provide to the function. Now, in order to provide an argument to a function, you just add a space between the name and then whatever argument is, let me say I'll just do Bob, followed by space, second argument, Smith, Tony, and who cares? I don't, that, that's good enough for right now. And if I run this, they'll say, hello, Bob, Smith, and Tony. That's what I output right here. And that was provided by simply accessing the args variable. And that provided, that showed all the arguments that I supplied. But sometimes you might just want to, access a very specific argument that was provided and not all of them, or maybe access one part here and one part in another part of your function. So in order to access a specific argument, you simply use the indexer because args is simply an array. And in order to access a item in an array, you just use the square brackets followed by the index number. Now zero would be the first, one would be the second item, and so forth and so on. Now go ahead and cut this out and paste this in here. Now if I run this, I'll go ahead and run this actually. The results won't be as expected because it pretty much did everything here but it added the square brackets with the one. And that's because it actually looked at this and thought it was a string. And that's because anything in these square brackets it's gonna actually evaluate those as strings, so it evaluated that as the variable, and then it just added this as a you know string. So we don't wanna view that like that. So we'll have to use what's called a sub expression, and that's you know basically a dollar sign, and then anything inside of the parentheses here will get evaluated, and this will run correctly. So if I run this, you'll see this is you know, what's expected, hello, Smith. Now you can do a lot of stuff, you know, accessing the index value of that args array to do what you need, but really quickly, if it starts to become, you know, complicated or have a lot of arguments, it's really difficult to know, you know, which argument is, you know, accepted and what part of the function, and it just starts getting a little bit confusing. So in order to really solve that problem, you can use what's called name parameters. And to do that, you call the function keyword, followed by the function name, and we'll go ahead and do write message two. We'll go ahead and keep in with the um, kind of naming convention of PowerShell. And then you provide whatever parameters names inside of this parentheses. So we'll type in message, dollar sign first, because this will be a variable, and person. Now, after that, you use the curly braces and then whatever statements you want inside of that. So we'll go ahead and do dear, we'll access the person variable, and then go ahead and print the message. And we'll go ahead and um, call that function. And go ahead and type in the dash message. Say, how are you? 
and then provide the person parameter, say Bob. If I run this, this will work as expected. The message um, argument that provided was printed here, and the person argument was printed here. So it says, Dear Bob, how are you? Now, that is uh, much more clear. They're named parameters, so you know exactly what you're providing. But if you wanted to, you could still just provide the arguments without, well, without actually naming the parameters. However, you just got to keep in mind they have to be in the order that you supplied. So for something like this, that's pretty easy to, easy to remember. But if you have a lot of arguments, um, you probably want to use the named parameters. So I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and run this, and the results are the same. Just one other thing I want to show you before I close this video out is there is still, this still can accept extra arguments. So if I type in Smith, Tony, some numbers, these are all other arguments. Now if I run this, just by right here, you won't see anything different, but I also didn't throw an error. And that's because all these extra arguments that weren't part of the named parameters were put into a variable, the args variable. And to show you that, I will just print the args variable afterwards. And when I run this, this will you know, run the function and it'll actually go ahead and print those extra arguments. And there might be some use cases where you, know, you may want to evaluate the if it's to see if there are any extra arguments provided. So that's this is kind of the basic foundation of PowerShell functions. Um, obviously, you probably really want to use named parameters, but for some simple things, you can actually access the args variable directly to do whatever you need. Now, in an upcoming episode, I'll talk about the advanced PowerShell functions, and there's really a lot of benefit by using those with really very little extra code. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching.